Hey, what's up? Welcome to Tech 160. Today we're going to be going over how to install the RetroPie on the Raspberry Pi 3. And we're going to be doing that from start to finish and even go over how to load all your favorite video games. And maybe by the end of the video we'll see who wins this fight. Stick around. Alright, so to get started you're going to need a few things. First you're going to need a Raspberry Pi 3. This is a 3B. You're also going to need access to a computer with internet access. That way you can download your ROMs. You're also going to need a micro SD card. This is a 32 gig. You can use a 16 if you prefer or if that's all you have. And then you need something to read the micro SD card in. This is a micro SD to USB adapter. I find these are the easiest to use. Or you could use the more traditional standard SD to micro SD adapter. You're also going to need about an 8 gig USB thumb drive and that's going to be to transfer the ROMs from your computer to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, but we won't need that right now. First thing we gotta do is format the micro SD card that we just inserted into the computer. I prefer to use the official SD card formatter. You can get it from this website right here. And you're just going to select and make sure that you have the micro SD card. And then hit the format button and then OK. And then obviously I sped that up a little bit for the sake of your time. And once you're finished, go ahead and close out of there. So the next thing we're going to have to do is go to the official RetroPie website. And it's right here. And we're going to download the Raspberry Pi 2 slash 3. Of course, if you had a Raspberry Pi 0 or a 1, you would do the Raspberry Pi 0 slash 1. But right now we're working with a 3. So download accordingly all right so as soon as this finishes up we're gonna unzip the file and then write it to the micro SD card all right looks like it's finished so we go to our downloads folder find a file and then we're gonna unzip it I use 7-zip it's a free download from 7-zip.org and I find that it works you know, just as well as any of the others, I guess. So again, I sped this up. It doesn't take too long, just about a minute or so. And then you're going to see it's in this other folder. And now that's when we open up our Win32 Disk Imager. And again, that's a free download. You're going to select the image file, the one that you just unzipped. And then you're going to make sure you're writing it to the micro SD card. And then you're just going to hit write. Hit yes. And then wait. I believe this took a couple minutes. But as soon as you're done, you're ready to load it into the Pi. So just hit done. And remove your micro SD card. Alright, so once you eject your micro SD card, you're going to want to go ahead and load your USB thumb drive. Now's a good time to format that because you're going to need that as soon as you get the Raspberry Pi up and running. So you're just going to select your drive, format it, and wait for it to finish. Alright, as soon as format's complete, go ahead and open up the thumb drive. And this is very important, you're going to create a new folder and you're going to name that RetroPy. Once you're done, you can go ahead, close it, and eject it. And now it's time to move on over to the Raspberry Pi. Alright, time for some action. Time to get your Raspberry Pi 
Get your micro SD card. Go ahead and load it up. And then we're gonna plug everything in. So you're not gonna require an internet connection, so you really don't have to worry about that. Load up your HDMI cable to your TV. And then I have a controller from Innext, or however you say that. Uh, I got that off of Amazon, it's actually pretty good. So we're going to use that to control the Raspberry Pi, plug that in, and then we have our power. And that's all you need. Once we load it up, we're just going to let everything boot. This process will take a, a few minutes. As you can see, I sped it up. But once it gets loaded, and it's gonna ask you to go ahead and configure your gamepad. So go ahead and get your controller, and just follow the directions. D-pad up, press up. D-pad down, you press down, left, right, start, select on and so forth. Now when you get to a button that you don't have, uh, you just go ahead and hold the A button for a couple seconds and that will skip it. And at the end, it wants you to set a hotkey, and that's pretty much just um, something that you can use to get out of a game. Uh, so I just left it at default. By default, it's start and select at the same time. And there you go. We got RetroPie. Now you need your USB thumb drive, and you're going to plug that in. Now what we did on that so far was we, we put a uh, just a folder called RetroPie. And when you plug it in to the RetroPie, it's going to build a file system on that thumb drive. And that's what we're going to use to go ahead and put the uh, ROMs on to load them up. Um, so what you want to do basically is let that sit there for about a minute uh, until it's done blank and then you can remove it. Go back to your computer. And you're going to open up two folders. You're going to open up your downloads or wherever you have your ROMs and then you're going to open up that file system that was just built on your USB thumb drive. Um, as you can see it has all the folders now of all the game systems. Uh, that's all the emulators that are available. So I copy the NES ROMs to the NES folder and I just got two SNES games. I'm going to go ahead and throw them in the SNES folder. And the emulators won't show on your RetroPie until you actually have a ROM in that folder. So now that we have them on the thumb drive, we can go ahead and eject it and get back to the Raspberry Pi. Go ahead and load it up. Same deal as before. It takes about a minute. After about a minute, or when it's done blinking, go ahead and remove the USB thumb drive and go ahead and restart. To do that, you go to start, go down to quit, press A, and go down to restart system, press A again, really restart yes, and wait for it to reboot. Alright, so now you can see once it loaded up, we got Nintendo Entertainment System and we got Super Nintendo Entertainment System. And of course we have the RetroPie, which is just the, I guess, the configuration settings. But when we go into Nintendo, you can see the three ROMs, Super Mario Brothers 1, 2, and 3. 
I'll go ahead and do a little demonstration of Super Mario. As you can see, it's just like you remember it. This um, video does no justice for the quality. It looks just like it would if you were playing it on a Nintendo. So let's go ahead and check out a Super Nintendo game. Here's Street Fighter. As you remember, this is what I was playing in the beginning. And now we get a chance to see who won. Alright, I think I got him. It's looking good. Oh, I'm a little dazed. Oh, he bit my head and I died. <laughs> I tried. Let's see how I do at Mortal Kombat. So there's an endless amount of games out there, just, uh, you know, you're only supposed to get the ROMs that you own, but there's any game you can think of is out there. And as you can see, I'm not too good at these, I need more practice. I hope you enjoyed, thanks for watching. <laughs>